Awesome. Okay. So it is precisely 8 a.m. and we're going to practice punctuality. So we're just going to go ahead and get started. So, all right, everybody, welcome and welcome again. Thank you for being on here. Thank you for being a part of Apex. My name is Forrest Wolverton. And this training is going to be happening over the next 12 months. You, we've already had the first session one month ago. This training is going to be happening over the next 12 months. This training is all about you and your personal development as an author. But not just as an author, it's more about how you show up in every aspect of your life and how do you get things done more effectively? How do you set and achieve every goal that you want to hit? As well as developing some new strategies and tactics that are going to allow you to take your life to the next level in every way, shape, and form. So, with this, I'd like to ask everyone's permission today. Is it all right if I expand your thinking just a little bit? Would it be all right if we expand your thinking? And if you, if you can, give me a thumbs up in the chat, a yes, a nod. Yep, uh, I can see you, wonderful, good. All right, and for many of us, is it all right even if I'd like to suggest allowing yourself to make some changes as often as you feel comfortable. And as often as you feel the need that you like to go ahead and make a change, you feel free to go ahead and do so for you. And with that, we'll begin our session. So we're going to begin today by doing, I'm going to share my screen right here, and we're going to do a little recap of what we went over last time. And let's start here. Cool. So last time we covered, for anybody that wasn't there or even if you were here, we want to just go ahead and briefly re recover what it is we went over last time. So last time I introduced you guys to welcome you to this journey. This is over the next 12 modules. You'll need to get comfortable, listen closely, and focus on what you're about to learn. No matter where you're starting from, the principles and techniques shared will impact you anywhere on your journey. These trainings are about who you are at the core and how you show up and how to shift to be the author who achieves all of the outcomes you set for yourself. Key word in there, all the outcomes you set for yourself. To achieve the, all the outcomes you set, you will need to grow, evolve, leave old patterns in the past and step into your own power, your own personal power. One of the most important things that I have learned is that I have created who I am and thus create myself anew. I'm often asked, you know, by many people, but can I do this? There's always that question when it comes back to me and my personal experience, you know, and, and I get this from people that, you know, sincerely asking, but, but can I do this? And there's that kind of little niggling, you know, little niggling doubt in the back of their mind of, can I do this? And I want to, affirm with you that 100% you can. And if you stick with me, I'll show you how to do it. So the last, the last time we covered owning the journey, responsibility into ownership, the process of evolution, five keys to success, three reasons people fail, and then my model of the world and what I want and what is my outcome. So if you're seeing this for just the first time, all I want you to do is this. Here's where I'm going to teach you how to do this training. I want everyone to go ahead and take a, wherever you're sitting, wherever you're at, get really comfortable. Like, don't even worry about making notes at this moment. Moment, Don't worry about writing anything down. If you've ever thought, had the thought in your mind, but what if I forget, erase that thought completely. Just take that eraser, smudge it off that board and whoosh, clear it off. All I want you to do right now, I'm gonna teach you what we teach little children how to actually, um, we teach this to children, um, typically when their parents are like, hey, my children are struggling to learn X, Y, Z. Is there anything we can do to elevate their learning and help them get back on track? One thing that we can teach people how to do is how to absorb all the information and get into the right state to learn. Um, if, if you've ever studied some, uh, if you've ever studied change or learning or um, anything like that. There's a lot of, there's a lot of theory. There's a lot of information behind all of it. But the most important thing is that all learning is state dependent. 
all learning is state dependent, right? So meaning the state you're in while you're learning the information is the most important thing about whatever you're doing. So I don't care whether it's math, I don't care what the subject is, it doesn't matter. Whether your brain is a learning machine, you are designed to learn, and everything can be learned. I believe that 100% fully and completely. Everything can be learned. And the most important thing is the state you're in while you're learning. If you take any child, I'll give you one example just before we get into this. If you take any child and you uh, tell them you're no good, you'll never learn this, X, Y, Z, I can't believe you do that. And you chastise them right before you sit them right down in a chair and say, now learn this, right? How's that going to work? It's not. They're going to be stressed. They're going to be upset. It's not going to work at all. So the mental, emotional place where you got to be is you got to clear everything else off. You got to clear the slate. Anything that's around you in your environment, for the moment it's done, for the next uh, next 60 minutes, you're here with me. And whenever you're going to start training, even if it's a five-minute training, 10-minute training, a 15-minute training, don't care. Here's what you're going to do first. So what I'd like you to do is as you sit back into your chair, and we're going to get into the right state to learn. We're going to get into the right state that's going to allow you to absorb this information. And as you sit back, what I want you to do is find a place either on the wall, up above your computer, somewhere up above eye level. So my eyes are literally going to be focused up higher to a point where both my eyes are going to essentially hit a point where they can't go any higher, but I'm going to pick a point on a wall and I'm going to stare at that point on the wall. So all of you do this with me while I'm explaining the instructions. Find a point on the wall up above eye level. Just find a place that's comfortable and begin to focus on that spot. As you begin focusing on that spot, what I'd like you to do is begin to open up your vision, your peripheral vision, so you can start to see not only the spot on the wall, but you can start to see everything else around you. You could see everything off to the my left, which is your right, and you can see everything off to your left. Everything you can see, you can see beyond your computer, you can see everything around the room, everything's happening all around you. As you open up your peripheral vision, hold this state constant. Hold it constant inside your mind. As you're opening up this point and you can see everything else around you, just make a mental note of how this feels to have your peripheral vision open and continue to maintain to do so. And just notice how this feels. Notice how it feels inside. As you hold this state constant, you'll notice that as you do it, inside your body is quite neutral. There's not a lot of emotions. It should be a quite calming place. And if calm isn't the word, most people will get to a neutral place where there's not much going on inside. And you're totally focused out here as well as seeing everything in your peripheral vision. As that's completely open, now feel free to bring down your gaze to eye level. So now I've got my eyes on the camera, but I've also got my peripheral vision open. I'm maintaining and opening my peripheral vision. That means every information in my visual field is now open and accessible to me. So as I see my computer behind it, I can see, I can see cups, I can see pictures, I can see for me, both lights around me, you can see around your room. And while you're looking straight at the computer or looking at my face, if my face is on the screen, plus all the other information on the screen, as you continue to maintain your peripheral vision, all of it's open and accessible for you. Now in this state, I'd like you to imagine as you're in this state and you're feeling a neutral feeling, Allow yourself to just see all the information on the page and any information you, you approach because you're feeling quite neutral, you're just going to allow it to be. Just allow the information to come in, allow your thought processes to take, take place and allow all the information to just, if you could see it on the page and then it's coming into your mind, whatever pictures, sounds, feelings you, you see, whatever you feel, whatever you hear, Allow that to come into your mind and just allow it to be. Don't even think about forgetting about it. Just remember. Allow your brain to just say the words inside of you, remember. Just allow yourself to remember 
all the information so that when you need it in the future, it'll be there. And when you access this state and you begin learning in this state each and every time as you have your peripheral vision open, you'll feel quite calm, quite neutral. You relax, relax your gaze, focusing on the information and allow everything else to be. And inside of yourself, just allow yourself to hear, remember quite comfortably, just allow yourself to be. Now I want you to begin to relax in this state. Just let everything out, let your, let your, muscles, everything else, and just continue to stay within your peripheral vision throughout this whole thing, the whole seminar, the whole one hour training that I've got for you now, allow yourself to remain in this state. Notice your experience. As you start watching trainings from this experience, you'll notice the information goes inside of you, whether you're aware of it or not, whether you're conscious of doing this or not is not the issue because everyone actually learns unconsciously when they just allow themselves to be at ease and comfort and have fun with it. So this is how you're gonna take trainings. So keep your peripheral vision open. And if you got this and it makes sense, let me know. Give me, give me a thumbs up, you're in your peripheral vision. And let's just have an agreement that you'll go through this training, use your peripheral vision and just pay attention. Don't worry about taking notes, just focus on what we're doing and don't worry about anything else. Can you do that? Good, good, all right. So this is called the learning state. And when you get into it and you practice it and you practice opening up this peripheral vision, you'll notice that you actually feel quite calm. There's no emotions, it's easy to do. You're accessing a different part of your brain that allows you to learn much more rapidly. And when you start learning from this state and every time you're ready to learn, which essentially means, hey, I've got something I wanna learn. Ooh, use the learning state. Sit down, get comfortable, pay attention, use this in your, whatever you're doing. This alone, teaching little kids how to do this and opening up their peripheral vision and even learning in classrooms, on average increases their grade point by one full letter grade, just by this alone not teaching them strategies, not teaching them and going into the little mundane little little things about all the information they're like that's in front of them. Just by teaching them how to learn, they learn anything more rapidly and more quickly. And all learning is state dependent and all unlearning is unconscious, which is going to be the theme of this training today specifically for us. So good, we've now recovered this. Now let's take a look at as you're maintaining your state, responsibility and ownership. So when we recover and we think about what we talked about with this, the main point was, as you think about responsibility, some people have a negative or uncomfortable feeling with the word responsibility. In my trainings and my coachings, I like to have people reframe that, scrap that word and use the word ownership because it actually is used to describe when you take ownership of something and you own it, there's a pride. There's a, there's a good feeling that happens with, oh, I own this. This is my life. Ooh, I own this, right? When I'm in charge, that's right, and you are in charge. When you're in charge and you actually use the language, I own this, I'm in ownership, it changes the way you begin to experience and you, the way you begin to deal things. And just pay attention. Have you ever had an experience like that in the past? Have you ever had an experience where you actually got to own something and notice how it felt when you're like, ooh, I own this, or this is now mine. Maybe it was a new car, maybe it was something else. But the language that you use inside your mind is very critical. The language you use inside your mind in order to achieve all the results and outcomes you want is extremely critical. How you talk to yourself inside your internal focus dictates how you actually feel. And we'll talk more about that. But it, changing the language changes how you feel. So by starting to use different language, you now change how you feel, thus changing your own reality. So I'd invite you now, if this feels good for you, to allow yourself to take ownership of this whole journey that you're on. And anything that's going on in your life start to think about taking ownership of it. Good. Next was the evolution of thinking. 
we move through this. I know how life is. We start at from point A to point B. Essentially, this graph is, is dictating how we learn as human beings. From point A to point B is this is, I know how life is. This is the way it's going. I'm having this experience of life. And uh, I mean, it's just how it is. And people are like, oh, yeah, yeah, life is going. It's all right. It's okay. Or maybe even worse, the, the worst word of all, it's fine. What? Fine. That's all that life is. Ah, it's going ah, all right. It's going fine. But notice the language. Notice the language in that, right? The language is describing that one word describes a whole vast experience underneath of it. And the one word that it comes to is fine. And some people are living life and it's fine. We better get, it's time for a change, baby. If, if fine is all, all it is, it's time for a change, right? Now, I'm not saying that. It's, it's really up for anybody who wants to make a change. But again, if fine is the experience, then we want to definitely start thinking about, well, what's fine? Because we're going along in life and everything's just going the way that it is. And we hit this point B where all of a sudden, oh, shit, I've got a problem. And it's like, did anybody just hear that? Did anybody just see that? It's like, oh, I've got a problem. And so they start to experience like, well, who, what do I do with this? This is a problem. And in fact, the problem could be, it could be a small problem. They're like, oh, I got, I got a little problem. It's not a big problem, but it's a little one. Sometimes they're big problems. And sometimes it's like, oh my gosh, the world's ending problem. Holy cow, did you watch the news? Did you see this? Did this happen? X, Y, Z. And it's a big problem, right? And so you start experiencing a problem. As you start experiencing a problem inside your mind and your mind begins to focus on the problem, all of a sudden you start to go down. Quality of life goes down. Everything goes down. When people are experiencing problems, typically you've all heard the language. I mean, people go around, they talk about the problem and they'll even ask people like, hey, I think I've got this problem. And someone else will be like, what's the problem? And they'll be like, they'll, they'll even get a little bit quiet. Well, you know, I've kind of been experiencing this problem. They'll talk about it and they'll talk about all the distinctions and everything that's in it. And they'll be like, oh yeah, dude, I think you got a problem. I think you got real problems. That's the worst kind of problem to have, real ones. Because those aren't even the fake ones, you know? It's like, oh, I've got real problems. So people start to talk this way and they start to language their problems. They start to language their experience. Life goes down. They hit a point C. And see, all of a sudden, you know, things are as bad as it gets. It's, you know, with the problem, things get to a point where it doesn't get any worse. And it's just like, it's just, it's as bad as it gets. And something happens though in that stage, something happens, something happens and tweaks in people's thinking. When they finally get to this place, something tweaks, they become aware of something, they become aware of some sort of resource, something outside of them that says, there's a solution to your problem. And then all of a sudden their eyes get wide. What? <laughs> solution to my problem. What do you mean there's a solution to this problem? And they start to actually search and they, and they realize there's solutions to this and you can solve these problems. As they start to realize that there are solutions, maybe they weren't even aware of before. Maybe everyone else in the world believed there were no solutions to their problem. Their, their thinking now gets elevated and all of a sudden, They've applied the solution. The solution worked. I'm now at a new point, a point in life, point A2 to B2, which is really, this is how it is. And I've got my solution and there's no more problem. This is the way we think. This is the way we evolve. This is for every problem, there is a solution. Now, the only time there's not a solution is when you're really in the problem and you're so focused on the problem, the only thing you can find is the problem and you can't even find where one problem begins and the other one stops right? That's, that's a real problem. Once you start recognizing a solution orient, oriented mindset, when you recognize that there are solutions and you start to become aware of it, you begin to look for them. And only once that happens, only and only then do you begin to find the solutions. Sometimes people have to beat you over the head with a solution before you actually take the solution. And if anybody's ever done that before in their life, someone's offered them a solution and they tell you something, you're like, no, nah, 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 nah. 
that's not going to work for me. And then later on, maybe a year once, I don't know, whatever it is, then they come back and you're like, actually, I tried that thing. It worked. And then you're like, and you're all tickled pink about it. You're like, wow, I wish I would have done that 10 years sooner. Would have saved me 10 years of time. Maybe about a hundred million dollars. I don't know. Would have saved me some time. So anyways, so it's exciting, right? So that's the evolution of our thinking. We have five keys to success. As you look down here, the five keys to success that I coach everyone on, this is the model. Know your outcome. you got to know what you want. You know your outcome. You take action. You have sensory acuity. You have behavioral flexibility. And you operate from a physiology and a psychology of excellence. This is... These are the five keys to success. If you're not getting success in anywhere in life, and I define success meaning you hit your target. There is a well-defined target. Here's a target. I'm able to throw out my throwing daggers. I've got a bow and arrow or I've got, maybe I've got guns, maybe I'm a rifleman, whatever it may be, whatever I choose. But I have essentially said, here's a target. I'm going to hit the target, whoosh, knock my arrows back, let it fly, and I hit my target. Hitting your target means success. It means it found purchase, it found its place, it hit, it worked, I got it, it's done, you see it, hit my, hit my target. So when people talk about fear of success, fear of failure, um, both of them, which are just dichotomies of the same issue, a fear of success or a fear of failure, doesn't really matter, it's just, one polarity to the other. I'm afraid of failing or I'm afraid of success. Success is in front of me and it's going to feel good and failure is behind me and oh, or maybe it's in front of me. I don't know. One direction. But either way, five keys to success. These must all ha happen in order for you to hit success, hit your target each and every time. Okay. So over the next 12 months, essentially you're here. I mean, why you're here, I don't know why you're here. Why are you here? You're here, you're taking these actions, you're learning about writing, you're an author, or maybe you haven't become the author yet, but inside your mind, you're starting to see yourself as an author, right? And you've got a reason why you're here. You, you do have a reason. And it's important that you acknowledge whatever those reasons are and start to recognize, why am I here? Why am I doing this? What's important to me about all of this? So. Moving on from success, the five keys to success, we have your current model of the world. This is your current mo model of the world. If you're not having success or you are having success, there's gonna be three main, main reasons why you're either succeeding or failing. This is not just why people fail, but it's also why they succeed. It's philosophy, strategy, and action. Your philosophy is the entirety of your unconscious beliefs. And I say unconscious because you're not consciously aware of all of your beliefs. You're not conscious of all the 600 plus muscles that you use to move about your day. You're not conscious of sitting there driving and moving all 600 muscles and beating your heart and breathing your body and repairing the paper cuts that you get from XYZ. You're not conscious of all of that. That's happening unconsciously. When you tell your body to move, it moves. When you tell your body to go, it goes, right? All of this, your whole entire belief system of how you operate in the world actually is an unconscious process with probably thousands of different beliefs, thousands of different experiences that you've learned. And this whole philosophy is what I pack together as your philosophy, your belief system that's inside of there. This is your current model of the world where you know either things are working or they're not. It's how you're actually operating. And it's not about knowing, it's not about knowing intellectually certain things are good for you or knowing intellectually I have this knowledge, I could, I could be an author or whatever else. It's what you actually feel and it's what you're acting on on a daily basis. Your philosophy and, and your emotions are gonna be closely knit and tied together. Your emotions will always give away your actual philosophy. I tell people, and people tell me all the time, but I don't actually believe this. I'm like, yeah, but how do you feel? How do you feel? And what's your experience of life there? And then they'll say, well, I feel this way. Yeah. You do. Cause it's your philosophy. 
I mean, the, the brain isn't always logical. Unconscious processes are not logical. So it's important to recognize in the philosophy, strategy, and action, your philosophy is not always logical. It's based off of interpreted experiences from the past. Okay, so it doesn't really matter. So if you're gonna get what you, everything you want in life, you're gonna have to change your philosophy. Something X, Y, Z will have to change, guarantee it. Your strategy, your strategy is the literal steps. This comes from literal steps to how do you do something. Your strategy of how you actually engage with any sort of task in the world and do it in a way that's comfortable, feels good, motivating, and in a healthy way for every area of your life. This is important to me because I teach all the people that I coach with, every part of the process of life gets to be enjoyable and fun. If it's not that way, we're going to make it that way. Why? Because you're going to live longer, be happier and healthier. And I can teach you to do anything, you know, five to 10 times faster when we have the right strategy and attitudes that go into it, which then comes down into action. I'm actually implementing my strategy. My philosophy is accurate. All things are aligned and it's working. So your perceptions are, you know, your perceptions are always true for you. When someone says, well, this is the way it is for me. I'll say, yeah, that's the way it is for you. It's the way it is for you. Your perceptions are always true for you. Because it's, eh, it's what you believe. Yeah, it's true for you. It works. Yeah. Whether it's good, bad, or different, it doesn't matter. It's just what's true for you. And then this was an opportunity to actually look at what do I believe about different things like success, writing sessions, me being consistent, how I handle challenges. Am I a winner? Will I make money? Will I see it through? All of these were just examples. There are hundreds and thousands of more examples that we, you could break through that you can become aware of. What am I actually doing at any point in my life, whether I'm getting what I want or not, we could break through so many different words. These are all just words that represent your personal experience, what's going on for you. Whether you're getting it or not, start to uncover and become aware of what is going on for me, right? Because the first step is awareness. You couldn't solve a problem you're not even aware of. And you're only aware of it because you want something different. So, all right, module two. Now, this is all pre-framing, and this is all really part of the whole crux of the issue for me. Module two, I labeled it a time for change. A time for change. So, I want to talk to you about change for just a moment. As we move down into it, I've already pre-framed you for, so that you, you're all aware of this. All learning behavior change happens unconsciously. There, I said it, it's all there. All learning behavior change happens unconsciously. That means even your books, all right? So you guys want your, we're all authors here well, or future authors or however you want to put it, right? But everything you're learning about being an author, everything you're learning about plots, about how characters work together, about listening to your characters, about their voice, about what's happening in your story. Every time you, every time you sit down and you float out into the world of your story and you see it all before you, and if you don't see it, maybe you hear it, maybe you feel it, right? For anyone who's not as visual, Visuals still exist, you're just not aware of them. Visuals exist, you're just not aware of them. That's okay, don't do it that way. If you hear it, then you're gonna pay attention to what your story sounds like, the character's voices, you're gonna listen to the words, you're gonna, maybe in fact, playing with words is what's really exquisite and sweet to you, right? The way the words are put together, it just sounds melodious, you know, like a good melody and it sounds like a song that just, melts your heart, whatever it may be. But the words, the way it could be that way for you, or maybe you even do it kinesthetically, or maybe in fact, you care about none of that. Maybe what really interests you is the plot, the story all together. Maybe what really interests you is actually all the conflicts and actually having it, talking to yourself about all the conflicts and everything that goes on inside, inside of this. And maybe you don't really pay a lot of attention to the, uh, to the actual pictures or feelings, but you're really interested in the plot and how the story all happens, right? So as you're learning all of this, all of this is happening unconsciously. And when you let it happen unconsciously, you learn the most rapidly. We're going to take learning from the standpoint of 
being little children, little children learn the quickest. And there's several reasons why they learn so rapidly. Number one, they let go of the rules. When you let go of rules of how life is, you open up yourself to all the possibilities of what it could mean. What could this mean? Infinite possibilities, infinite learnings, infinite everything. When you let go of the rules, you're not then putting yourself in this small little bubble and structure that restricts. No one likes to be restricted. Nobody likes it, right? They want to be open. They want to be, they want to feel it, they see it, hear it, feel it. They want to be open. They want to be able to go into each new thing and experience it. So as you're listening to people and you're actually getting a feel for all of these things with writing, writing it out, and I've heard this from many people as you join Apex, you're listening to people that all have a system that works for them. Anytime you listen to any author who's made it in your mind, if you, that's a word you use, if they've made it or has a lot of experience or they're in the publishing industry and they've got all this stuff, you know, they've got publishing industry, they've got systems in place, they know how to market, do all these books. Okay. That is their that's what they've learned. That's their interpretation. That's their system. Most people, when they start to gain these systems, start to close themselves off, off from other possibilities. So when they start to engage anything, they put it in the system. Well, here's a system that works. You know, maybe, maybe they've tried a bunch of other things, but they found this works the most. Um, but anyways, most of the time when we get into systems, we start to use the system. We use the system that works for us and we start to close ourselves to, out to other options. And this happens in publishing. It happens to major writers. It happens, you know, people follow the rules, you know, whatever it may be. They learn these systems, these rules, and they start to do that. And that's, it becomes so concrete and they get so effective at it. It may be the best thing they've ever learned. In fact, it may be the best thing out there. It may be, but either way, they then close themselves off from other options. Possibly. Doesn't have to be, but possibly, right? Depends on your mindset. Depends on whether you remain open or not. That's a decision. But all of this happens so quickly and so rapidly, especially for little children. There are no rules. There are no constraints, which is why they can literally go and say, well, you say it's that way, but they look at a phone. Oh, I love this watched a TEDx recently and listening to a TEDx, he said, what was the most important thing that we could learn about hackers and the mindset around hackers? They would, they'd look at this, you know, their, their phone. Most people would say, well, they'd ask, well, what does this phone do? And they'd listen to the person and the person says, well, you can call people, you can do this and this and that. And so people would then follow the rules and they say, oh, well, I can just do this, this and that. Here's the rules. This is how you use it, right? It's the phone. Well, they said hackers in their belief system, in their mind, when they look at a phone, they say, not what can it do in terms of asking someone else, but what are the possibilities this could perform more than its usual functions. Everyone says it does this, this and that, but what more could it do? What else is this that nobody else is doing that could be the answer or solution to something else? right? So it's a different question. So in the context of learning, and we're all learning, and we're going to learn how to hit every, and, and actually hit everything, hit every target. When you say there's a target, you hit it. Now, if you say there's a target and you say you're going to hit it, but then you turned around and threw it at the car behind you and the car alarm goes off, we've got to say, okay, well, okay, well, let's first aim at the target, right? Let's make sure that everything in our life is organized in such a way that you're okay with hitting the target. Let's learn how to do that. So all of this, everything's happening unconsciously. Little kids absorb, in fact, their critical faculty, the aspect of their mind as, as their prefrontal cortex is developing, the prefrontal cortex being the area of the brain where you start to reason, plan, develop, forward thinking comes into play forward thinking, right? Anybody have a future inside their mind? Anybody think about the future at all, right? That's your prefrontal cortex right there. That's your ability to think forward. 
I used to train um, teenagers who hadn't been trained how to forward think. If you ask them about their future, they'd say, I have no future. I say, that's right, because you have to be trained how to have a future. Having a future is training. How to set goals, hit targets, all of this is training. This isn't innate stuff, guys. This is not innate. This is not some inbred born skill that people are born with. This is not how it works. There are not high achievers. Now I, I get everyone's been told there are high achievers and then not the high achievers. There's the one percenters and then the not one percenters. I'm, I'm here to tell you right now, it's a bunch of bullshit. It's a bunch of bullshit and put it in that category. Would you ever go, would you ever go to a farm and try to touch all the, the bullshit there? No, you're not going to touch it. You're going to sit, you're going to set it down, walk away, go another direction, leave it there. It's crap. It's not how it is. There are not some authors now, and I get this and you know, this has always come up, you know, there's a lot of odds at stake, you know, can we all be successful as authors? You know, we're all learning. We're all learning to hit our targets. Absolutely. It's only a thought that there's, you know, only enough space at the top for one person. That's only a thought. It's not real. You know how much money there is today? So much money. In fact, we're printing it. We've got money machines. There's so much money today. And if you would have thought back several hundred years ago, or maybe several thousand years ago, there was no money at all. There was no money at all. All they were doing was bartering and trading. We've now upgraded our economy, our services, the things that everything's there. I don't even have to go be a farmer today. I don't even have to go do jobs that we used to think. I, we, now we now export certain jobs to certain countries. I don't even have to go do those today. So all of this stuff that we've learned and we've now, we now have before us, you're now learning to be in a specific trade that's a unique trade. And there's enough room at the top for everybody. And all learning behavior and change happens unconsciously. If, if there's ever, ever been a time in the past where you didn't learn something or something wasn't easy, probably because we're following some unconscious rules. Sometime when you're a kid, and we'll talk about this also in a further later session, but when we're children, we're just learning machines. We're just going, 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 going. And then all of a sudden your parent says, you can never do that. And you learn it. And because they're the authority that you're like, okay, dad, can't do that. And so you never even thought you never even tried, or maybe, you know, depending on your childhood, X, Y, Z stuff happens. So maybe somebody took a look at your work and your stuff and they said, wow, you're going to become an author. And then all of a sudden you learn to have a block just like that. And you're like, they eh, ain't doing that again, right? Put myself out there, see if I ever do that again. That don't feel good, right? So learning happened fast and it happened in an instant. Now those are negative beliefs. Those are negative experiences, but the positive ones happen just as quickly. They happen just as quickly. The only difference is, is that negative is nine times more powerful than positive. So in my coaching, when I work with people, a lot of what we're doing is teaching them to learn, gather learnings from the negative crap so that we can let go of the emotions completely so you can focus on the positive stuff. Because all learning happens just like that. All learning just happens in a snap. That's how fast it happens. You know, it was funny, really, really funny, really funny joke. Well, it's not even a joke, it actually happened. But um, one of the guys I trained with, um, one of the first people that started to discover NLP and well, actually created it um, by looking at what was working with therapists, looking at what techniques processes actually got results from the ones that didn't because a lot of therapists were out there and they learned to label people, but they didn't necessarily learn how to get them past their labels. They didn't get, learn how to get them past their emotions. They could talk about it, but they couldn't get them past it. So NLP was all about, well, how do we get people to get past it? and actually do something different. And so he walked into a bar and in the bar, it just so happened that night that there was a therapist sitting there and he went and sat by this guy and ordered, ordered a beer. And as he was drinking his beer, looks over at the guy, so what do you do? And then the guy says, well, I'm a therapist. He's like, oh, cool, therapist. Yeah, I've known quite a few of those in my day. Yeah, yeah. You ever work with those trauma or, you know, ever work with trauma or some sort of uh, 
you know, you know, PTSD type stuff like that. And the therapist said, yeah, I do. Actually, I do work with that stuff. And, uh, and uh, so Richard actually says to him, it's like, yeah, how long does it take to get rid of it? And it's like, oh, it takes three years. And he's like, well, that's kind of odd. My friends only had the problem for two. And the message of the story was the whole experience learned in an instant, learned in a day, learned in whatever period of time. When people have negative experiences, they happen in a moment. But we hold on to them for years because we don't know how to let go of them. All emotions, all trauma, all PTSD, all of it, it's a, it works the same way. It's inside, your, it's inside your brain. Causing real issues, causing real suffering, causing real pain. But nevertheless, there was a moment when it wasn't there. All learning, behavior, and change happens unconsciously, and it happens in a moment. When you get that, you also get everything you want in life you can learn and you can change in an instant. Now there's some things we gotta know and some things we gotta do in order to make that happen. And I'm not telling you to believe me, don't, you don't have to just believe all this, but recognize that all learning happens that fast, all of it. So when you think about, well, it's gonna take me years to learn how to write a book. No, it'll take you a moment. Many moments over many years. You'll have many insights. You'll gain many new understandings. There's always a new perspective to gain. There's always a new level to gain. There's always a new depthness, depth to your stories. But all of it happens in a moment. All of it happens in a moment. And when you look back at all of it and you see it, you're like, wow, look at how far I've come. Look at how much I've already learned. Look at how much I'm already implementing. Wow, that's impressive. That feels good. So, you know, when you start to think about it that way, it starts to become a little bit different, right? And if we're going to have everything we want, we're going to hit all of our targets in the future. It means we've actually got to have our full focus aimed towards the future we want to create. It means we got to have our full focus, our full attention must be on the target. If there's anything from the past, that's like, hey, but look at me. Well, hey, hey, look behind you. Yeah, there's some stuff back here. You didn't deal with it just yet, right? If any of that stuff ever comes up, we've got to actually know how to deal with it, how to handle it so that our entire focus is focused on what we're creating, not what we're not creating. And we're going to talk about that as well. So today I just wanted to as you, as you now see, how is that a problem? I've got this little graphic. We've now talked about all learning behavior and changes unconscious. We've talked about children and they absorb, they absorb, absorb, absorb. They, you know, they learn to ride bikes. They learn how to move their muscles. They learn how to do all of this. That happens all unconsciously between the ages of seven and eight. Now today it's getting a little bit younger, but the point comes when all of a sudden this conscious forward thinking mind comes into play and all of a sudden, we start to have this barrier between learning and everything else. And so we start to think about things, right? We start to think about what we're hearing, seeing, and feeling. And the thinking can often get in the way of solutions. But it also can be there to get, it can be there when we ask ourselves the right questions, get us towards where we want to go. So the power of being conscious and developing a well-established conscious faculty, meaning that it's used with integrity to create what you want is fantastic. When we're consciously or unconsciously creating more pain, suffering, and heartache and sorrow for our wife, that's a problem. But the question is, is how is that a problem, right? So if we look down here, any problem, this is any problem. I, I'm talking writer's block. I'm talking, and, and when I say writer's block, writer's block, eh, dude, something in the philosophy is missing, some sort of part of the strategy is missing. 
um, action. There's not enough action to even evaluate, or maybe we're not even getting to the point of taking action. Maybe we're not even getting to the point where we're actually diving all in and we're actually learning and expanding to the fastest that we could. So the thing is, is we ask ourselves, how's that a problem? So anytime you're experiencing not what you want, you could say on the dichotomy of that, there's some sort of problem. And, and if that's the case, if you're not experiencing what you want, you're probably experiencing some level of a problem. And the problem with problems is as you look at the, as you look at the graph, as you look down here, you can see that there's a thought process from the bottom right corner that leads into there. There's a, a thought process leads into the problem. As the thought process leads into the problem, you then have, you start thinking and everything is focused inside the problem. You've labeled the problem. It's got such great distinctions. You know what it looks like, sounds like, feels like to be inside the problem. And as you're inside the problem, all you can see is the problem. And it's like this. I can only see the problem. Is there anything outside the problem? I, I, can, I can only see the problem. And, and, and people are telling you solutions like, no, no, I can't see that. No, all I can see is the problem. I'm having a problem. There's something inside this problem. And as you're inside the problem, the only thing you can detect is the problem. You can't even detect solutions. But the moment that someone says, well, you got to take your hands off your face. You got to look, you got to step outside. If it wasn't a problem, what would it be? What if this wasn't a problem? When you say that question, I don't know. What would it be if it wasn't a problem? I've now stepped outside the boundaries of that problem with a question to take a look at it and say, well, what if it wasn't? Notice my eyebrows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What if it wasn't right? So as you start to notice, what if it wasn't a problem? And if I can get you to ponder that deeply enough for just a moment, if I can get you to think about it and ponder, well, what if it wasn't? Like seriously, what if it wasn't? I mean, I'm dead serious. If it wasn't a problem, what would you have instead? Now you take a deep breath though. It's important you always take a deep breath. I always say, take a deep breath. So do, do so, to always take a deep breath and you always say, well, what if it wasn't? What if success and failure was never my problem? Say what? right? What would it be instead? If it wasn't a problem, what would it be instead? Now, if you're open to change, that question can be a massive difference. That's just one question. I've got, you know, I got hundreds of questions and I got hundreds of ways of coming at it so that we break up the neurological properties of the problem. Because the problem inside the mind is that these things start spiraling. They just go into a spiral. Like you're, you're inside the problem and it just goes in a spiral. Any, anything asked inside the question, inside the problem, literally just becomes, well, no, no, it, it just cycles. And it's literally, your literal neurology, neurology has these little, they, they literally become these little bundles and pockets that are disconnected from the entire wholeness of the mind. So in fact, when you're experiencing a problem, you're experiencing a small little piece a neurology that's all bundled and wound up in little places and it just keeps you going and going in a loop. No exit. There's no exit strategy. There's not even a problem solving strategy. If you have got a good problem solving strategy, you can solve it. But some people, and in some areas of life where we haven't learned that yet, we may still be inside the problem. So we have to ask ourselves, how is that a problem? And if it wasn't a problem, what would we do instead? That question, notice for everyone that's on the webinar today, notice how that feels. Feels different. Doesn't mean it's gone. I haven't even done any work on it. That's just changing it a little bit with a different question. But notice how questions provide you a different feeling and a different result. Cool, huh? So as we're learning things, if we ever learn to have a problem, then we can learn to have a solution. All of this happens at the unconscious level. You're not doing this consciously. Nobody has conscious problems. It's all unconscious. 
So don't even think about that. You're not doing this. No, nobody does this to themselves consciously. Nobody does this to themselves. Nobody experiences this stuff all consciously. It's all unconscious. That's your out. That's why you get to be generous and kind to yourself. Because you didn't know. You didn't know, right? So anytime we're moving forward in the future, we're encountering something, that's just a, that's a time when we got to recognize, hmm, I'm encountering something. But what I want instead? Or what's important to me about this? Now, on here, we're going to talk just briefly about values. I'm opening up values. Values are what's important to you. It's entirely critical that this concept and idea, as you hear it, and we take a look at it, I want you to get the feel that people don't do what they want. They do what's important to them. Everything you get in your life from whether you sit down to writing on a daily basis or not depends on what's important to you. And this, and you've got this whole brain, this whole mind. And the reason I've got the picture up here of the whole like health and fitness, career and business, intimate relationships, friends and family, personal growth, spirituality is because you're a whole human being. And as you're going to be the author that you're going to be with all the success that you desire, you're a whole human being and there better be some balance. There better be some balance. Oh my God. I just heard somebody on one of the webinars like, and, and people even took this. If I want to be an author, I've got to spend 12 to 16 hours a day in a chair writing. But what about my health? What about my friends? What about sex every once in a while? What about spirituality? What about career and business? What about personal? Like, and, and actually I got this phone call and someone was said, oh, but if I want to be successful and they learned this because they heard from all these professional authors, well, this is how I live my life. This is the way it is. If you want to be a professional, you better be sitting there 12 to 16 hours a day. It's what I do. Here I am. Be like me. And then you realize, well, wait a minute. They're out of balance. And no, it doesn't have to be that way. That's a, that's a bunch of, remember when I talked about bullshit and you just put it in the field and you leave it there and you never touch it again? Yeah. Put it there, never leave it there, never touch it again. Inside your mind, put it in that field and you're like, woo, PU, I'm out. Right? So the thing is, the thing is, guys, we all do what's important to us. And if any area of life is out of balance, then we may want to look on resolving that, right? Because as an author, you need balance. Your health, your blood flow impacts your creativity, massive level. Your how well you feel connected spiritually, that's a very vague word, but right? I'm not talking about religion, but spiritually, that how well you feel connected that way, that impacts you. Your personal growth, your friends, your family, your relationships. If you've got money, right? Most people don't feel very calm if they've run out of money. Tell you what put some stress on that plate, right? So people do what's important to them. And that includes if you find yourself sitting down writing daily, that's because it's important to you. Even if you feel terrible and saw other things aren't going right and right in life, like that's because it's important to you. It's a value. It's important to you. And if you haven't learned to make things important to you and how to shift that, we're going to have to learn how to do that consciously, right? So all of this because everything is unconscious, we've got to make it conscious. If there's a problem, we've got to make it conscious and decide I want something else. That's when things become conscious. That's our conscious mind is the aspect of us that allows us to make new decisions, remake and decide, re, you know, we can reframe the past, we can rethink about the past, we can add new meaning, we can change our own concept of ourselves consciously using unconscious processes and all of this happens as we change our concept of ourselves everything else our world changes and this is important that everything can change because it's just learned everything can change because it's just learned when people talk about their business and it's better during the holidays hmm, sounds like some conditioning i wonder what it would take to get past that conditioning right but you know, the whole world's being conditioned for something. So why not? So the thing is, is what are we doing? And we've got to become conscious of it because everything that's happening in our life is unconscious. Our unconscious mind 
drives 95% of your entire life. Everything you get right now, your full result, 95% of it is unconscious. Meaning you probably, most people don't know how they do it. And if, if you're to ask a, prof, a proficient writer, how do you do this? Most of the time they have no idea, they can't even tell you. If you ask a bicyclist, how do you do what you do? They're like, I don't know, I've got 600 muscles. How do you know which ones to move at the right time? Can you go muscle by muscle, blow by blow? No, couldn't even do that. Couldn't do that. It's too much. And yet it all happens. It all happens unconsciously. Don't even have to think about it. When you've learned and you've conscious, you start out conscious of now there's something to learn because now we're all adults. So you're starting out consciously. Wait a minute. There's something I want to learn. Here it is. I'm conscious of it, but I'm not unconscious competent yet. I'm not unconsciously competent in all of the, the skill sets, the behaviors, everything else. So as we're learning, as I taught you how to do the learning state at the very beginning, and you open up your peripheral vision and you start to open yourself up to everything you're hearing, seeing and feeling simultaneously, we're now teaching you how to learn unconsciously. Get your unconscious mind out of the way so you can learn unconsciously. You'll do it the quickest, the fastest, the best. You'll feel the best. You'll sleep the best you've ever slept. When you open yourself up and you learn unconsciously, just like you did when you were, you were a kid, just like when there were no rules, just like when there was nothing else to stop you, you learn the best. And you do every time. And it's not that that door was closed behind you. Maybe someone once told you, when one door closes, another door opens. Well, it's time to walk back through that door, but only grab the handle and open it as far as you want, because that's up to you. But once you grab the handle and you step through the door, you find that there's a lot less rules and a lot less things you have to do that open you up to developing yourself the way you want. Because all of this is about developing yourself the way you want to be. We talked about being the author you want to be. First, you got to have a vision. You got to see yourself as that thing, that person, the author who's got the money, that's got the balance, that they're achieving their outcomes, they're hitting their goals. But they're not just the one-time author. They're not the, oh, I hit my, I, I made one gigantic book in my life, made a, a billion dollars, and then I can't even do it again. And then I feel so fearful that I'm going to get, my butt kicked by anything else that I write that I can't even get myself to go write another story and put it out there. Right. That's not it. So all of this that I'm getting you to do right now is realize that the author you want to be as you're learning your way to all of this, you've got to have the picture so fully developed in your mind with all that you want to have in there. It's got to all be there. It must be there. You got to, if you want. Now, what's important to you, your values, having, recognizing, well, what is important to me about being an author? What kind of author would I like to be? And, and everything that you're going to put in your mind, it's not a hope. If I could give you one thing as well, you know, as we're wrapping up this training in a few minutes, I may go a little bit overboard. So I apologize, but if you're, if you can all stick with me for just another little bit is erase the word hope from your mind. There is no hope. There's only certain determination that I've decided this is the path I'm going and I'm going to get it. That's all there is folks. That's it. There is no hope. There's only certain determination. I'm getting it. I let hope go years ago because hope had nothing to do with it fierce determination, willing to change myself, knowing my outcome, knowing what I want, willing to change and shift in order to give it with all the balance. You can be the author you want to be with all the balance, all the balance. I mean, all the balance. You can have the relationships you want. You can spend your time writing. You can have the money. You can have the lifestyle. And if that's not important to you, if just getting your story out there is your mission, well, Good heavens, get it out there the best possible way. Get it into the hands of the most many readers. Learn how to write proficiently and make your readers so engrossed and engaged by this because that's the kind of author you are because that's the image that you had to begin with. That's what you're going to achieve. 
and people say, well, I don't know if I'm going to make any money at this. Well, if you want to make money at this, the time to decide is now. The time to decide isn't later. That's backwards. That's ass living life ass backwards driving. Hopefully we're going to get there, but then not sure where I'm going to get it. No, 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 no. I don't live that way. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Nope. And you can be the author that has it all. You can be the author that has it all. And if you don't believe it yet, believe you me and continue to stick with me so we can develop you because with enough personal growth and enough investment in you, whether you believe it or not, it's possible. And I wouldn't be here unless somebody else also believed in me that it was possible. One short story was, it was almost seven years ago now. Seven years ago, I had been doing um, what a lot of people, I mean, I, I did network marketing, right? The big network marketing word scares people to death. Like, oh shit, don't sell me something, right? You know, that person that sells their friends and their family, really excited about something. Dude, I was so excited. And I had never done network marketing before, right? Never done it before, right? I didn't even know people were afraid of the word. I had no idea. I was one of those people I had just grown up so sheltered. Had no idea people were afraid of the word. Actually, I didn't even know anybody was afraid of selling at that point. I didn't, I wasn't even, I, I had never learned to be afraid of selling. I had never consciously even learned to be afraid of talking to people, right? Never learned it. So, but if that's something you've learned, then you have to let it go. We have to learn something different. So the thing is, is I started learning, I started developing a team, growing a team, and I started getting this problem. And the problem was that everyone I started to work with, like most of them, I was attracting most people had a lot of fear. And I was like, what? You're feeling fear for talking about something you love and like? I mean, is it actually benefiting someone? I mean, if you're actually feeling like, you know, I mean, if you feel like you're scamming people, I mean, yeah, I hope you're afraid, you know, don't put that shit out there. But if you actually believe in it and it's helping people, well then by all means, I almost feel like you got a mission and uh, you better tell people about it. So the thing was, I, I couldn't understand. Back then, I could not understand. I only had my model of the world and I was so locked into it. I couldn't understand. And I, you know, I went over to the Philippines and I, I sold in the Philippines. I built a team of people that were sellers. And then all of a sudden, even though I had found a few other people that were like me, and we did really, really well, built a team well over 600 people, which was a, I mean, I never even expected it, but it just happened. And then all of a sudden they started finding people that were too afraid. And I hit this place. I'm like, too afraid. Good heavens. What do we do about this? You know? And I just listened to them and I'm like, wow, okay. They're feeling fear. What do you do for this? I'm like, I don't even know how to help you. I don't even know. I, I am so blown away by this problem. I don't even know how to help you. I mean, you're feeling fear. I mean, I used to have problems with anger and anxiety and this other stuff, but fear, no, that wasn't even, no, that wasn't, that wasn't my problem, but it was their problem and it was in their model of the world. And it's what they were feeling. And so I got to this point, you know, things happen, life happened, a bunch of stuff happened. I moved back to the States or when I came back to the United States and uh, feeling pretty defeated, feeling pretty, uh, pretty, pretty defeated. I mean, we still had a team of 600 people, but if I wasn't there growing it, it wasn't growing. I mean, I had a few other people growing it. So we maintained and we actually maintained for years, but it wasn't growing. That was my problem. And, and actually I had a friend, he's like, Hey, you got to talk to this guy. You got to talk to this man. I think he might have a solution for you. And I was like, well, dude, bring it on. So I started talking to him and he's like, well, what's your problem? I mean, what's going on with you? Why would you want to learn this? And I'm like, well, you know, I've got a team and the thing I hear most frequently is they've got these fears and I just don't know what to do about it. And it stops them. I mean, it stops them cold. Like they can't even move, like paralyzed. Like they're, they're frozen in fear, paralyzed. And he's listening and he's listening. Yeah, yeah. Well, like what else, what else? I'm like, well, yeah. And so like, you know, here I am and I don't know how to help them. Um, he's like, so what if you could help them? I said, well, if I could help them and they could get past their fears. And I said, well, freak, dude, I'll be rich. Like I'll probably be a billionaire or something. Like, 
help people get past their fear. If that's the thing that's stopping them is fear, then good heavens, I'll be probably a multi gazillionaire. And so he, so he's like, okay, well come to this training. I'll teach you how to do it. So I came to the training and I was like, dude, if this, <laughs> it is like you know, back then it's like you know four thousand bucks and i'm like four thousand bucks dude i'm gonna i'm gonna be a gazillionaire like four thousand bucks i don't even care man so like i signed it had no money in the like i had like 600 bucks in the bank so i paid him what i could put it down said i'll find the rest of the money i'll get there so in a couple of days because i was determined i signed on the dotted line i got resourceful i found the money made it happen went to the training experienced it what I got from the training was more valuable than anything I could have ever learned. For me, it was the, it was, it was the training that changed it all. So in that training, I didn't realize how much I had been connected to my past and all the beliefs, everything around it, just right there. I didn't even see a way forward. I didn't even see myself being a success. I was like, I'm, I'm it. I'm done. I'm broke, dude. I got nothing. I put every, I mean, I put in money. I didn't even have at the moment. I just invested myself and did it. And out of that training, when I came out, I had a different set of tools, techniques, things that worked, but it wasn't just about having that. I realized, dude, this is about life good God, this is about life. This isn't about money. This is about life. I was at my wits end. I was at my wits end. I was at the very brink of all of it. Had nothing left. And he believed in me. He believed in me and he sold me, even though I had no money. I, I, I told him, I was 100% honest to you. I've got this much money to my name. He's like, good, go find it. Invest do it now. Pay the money. Best decision of my entire life. He believed in me and it happened. Because from that, everything else sprouted. I got past my own fears, my own self-loathing, my own hatred, my own, all the disgusting, nasty stuff that was there. But even stuff that I had, you know, I'd gone to therapy. I'd gone, I got, did, I did all, did I did it all? Didn't have much results. I had some results, but all of a sudden, change. In a moment, it all changed. In a seven period of time, day period of time, I learned tools and techniques and it all changed. It all changed for me. And the important thing was, is he believed in me. Regardless of the amount of investment, regardless of the time and effort I put into it, most authors spend years dedicated to a craft. They're not even sure whether they're going to make it or not. They don't. They don't. They're, they're not sure. They've got doubts. They've got doubts. Doubts are real. It's in your head, but it's still real. Still feels real. And if I could be the man that tells you all of that can change, all of it can, in a moment, whoosh, clear the slate. Anything you learned, anything that was negative, anything that held you back, anything that stopped you, could be gone. And you felt it. I mean, I'm not talking about anything else, but you feel it. Because all of this is about you. It's more than, dude, it's more than money. This is life. This is life. If you don't get past the things that stop you, I'm telling you by the time that we're all whatever, wherever, the end of, end of our lifetime, like the very last day, you would look back and be like, God, I wish I would have just gotten rid of that shit. I wish I would have gotten rid of my money blocks, my writing blocks, being the biggest, best author, putting my stories out there, making the biggest impact. All of this, I'd trade it all. At the very last moment, I trade it all. I give it all up. I would have given away all my doubts, all my whatever, anything that held me back. I'd give it all up. And you would, wouldn't you? You'd give it all up because at the very end, you'll be like, how silly was it that I held on to any of this stuff? I mean, I learned it sometime in the past and in the face of everything I want to create, 
in the face of everything I want to create, let it go. Person once asked me, how do you let something go? I said, oh, cool. Do it like this. You're like kind of holding on to a pen. And I said, first, move your thumb. Okay, thumbs out of the way. Next. Index. Next finger. Next. Leave it in the field and walk away. Now, I get some people and we talked about, well, it's not that easy. Sometimes it's not that easy. Sometimes we've got to really work to resolve it. And we do. We resolve it 100% of the time. And it's because you decided you're going to go on and you're going to make a change. You decided a decision was made that I will be successful. I will achieve my outcomes. Whether I've ever set a goal and an outcome in my life doesn't matter. I'm going to learn this. I'm going to learn it. I'm going to take it all the way. I'm going to be the author I want to be. I'm going to create the life I want to create. I don't care whether it's people get into network marketing. You know why they get into network marketing? Because they're looking for options. They're looking for options for solutions. Why do people get into writing? Because they've got an outlet that they love. They love it. They love stories. They connect with them. They love stories. And they see that it could be a possible outlet to living the life they want to live. Being an author, sharing your stories. It's an amazing life. It's miraculous. It's beautiful. You get to change people with words. There's no better art. There's no better anything. You get to put everything you love inside of these books and people get to read it. And you'll know you're there when you've got plenty of haters. You've got plenty of haters and plenty of lovers. You got people that love you. You got people that hate you. You got so many people, you don't even know what to do with them all. But you're like, screw the haters because yeah, of course they're going to be there. They got to be there. You got to have room for the haters. They got to have their own little section, their own little choir their own little section, their fanfare of they hate you, right? Now, I say this. I say this all with, with seriousness. You know, I, I, I've been aware. I didn't really care to follow it, but last night I decided, because I'm going to look into it, a lot of people are really upset with J.K. Rowling right now. A lot of people. I don't think you should, if, if you want to be a writer, I don't think you should be in politics. I'm just saying, if you're going to be a successful writer, I would suggest stay out of politics. Unless you've got a billion dollars and you don't care what anybody thinks about you anymore. And you're like, I'm done, whether you like me or not, you know, it's as simple as that. Because the thing is this, guys, the thing is, is this, there will be authors. I mean, I can't tell you, I hear so many stories. There are people that hate authors and, and then they, and then they decide they're going to go ruin them and ruin their whole career. What a bunch of wasted bullshit time. I'm telling you, you're wasting your time. If you want to go destroy people, it's a waste of time. Unless like there is seriously something wrong, like seriously something wrong. I mean, dude, I wouldn't spend time on that. If I'm creating what I want in life, I am not going to spend a damn second. Like, going out and destroying other people. What a dichotomy. I don't have time. I'm living my life. I'm too damn happy. I'm too damn joyful. I've got my books to write. I don't have time to go look at all the hogwash. I don't have time. You think other authors that are professional out there are sitting there being like, oh, that J.K. Rowling. I don't think so. Now, I, I, I don't think so. Now, and I get there's a lot of emotions behind these people, but I'm talking about what do you want to create? You can't destroy and create in the same sentence. You can't. Because I looked at her and I looked at, okay, she got some comments. Okay. I'm like, this is a distraction. This is a major, major distraction. I'm a coach. I get people to where they want to go for a living. My job is to get them results. And if I, if I, if I'm, if I sidestep that at all, I'm going to say, really, how dare me? Because any, if I give you acceptable decisions to start focusing on anything other than you want to create, uh, I'm not a coach. I'm telling you right now, I'm not. 
Nope. My job is to help you create what you want. That's it. And if you're spending time doing anything that you don't want to do, which includes, which includes going and destroying other authors, which is the very career in which you hope to have, what a waste of time. I'm telling you right now, wasted time. Wasted. I'm just telling you, I, that's my perspective on it. If you want to get everything you want in life, focus on what you want. If you focus on all the other kind of garbage that happens in the world, there's plenty of garbage, guys. There's plenty. I mean, you look at Facebook, there's just, there's plenty of it. I'm telling you, you don't need it. This is, this is your permission. You don't need it. You don't. Not to have what you want. And I'll tell you, there's a lot of people that get upset. There's a lot of people upset about so many things in life. You don't need it. I, I, that's my perspective. There's some things I choose to get involved in and there's some things I choose to stay out of. But the one thing I always get involved in is, are you creating the life you want? And, and your focus, if, is your focus getting you to where you want to go? And I can guarantee you, anytime it's on negativity, most likely not. Most likely not. It's obviously up for you to decide where you spend your time. But I'm going to tell you, every moment you're not spending your time creating the life that you want, you're spending the life creating what you don't want. I'm not for that. I will never teach that. That's it. So I won't teach it. So create the life you want. Create the world the way you want it. Create more compassionate people. Create more healthy relationships. Create understanding. Create friendships. Create bonds of friendships. Create understanding. That will change more for you than anything else. So what does this have to do with being the author you want to be? It has to do with being the author you want to be. Know your outcome. What is my outcome? I've spent a lot of time starting to break up your thinking so we can get to creating what is my outcome? Who do I want to be? Who do I want to show up as? Day to day, in and out. Who do I want to be? I'm spending a lot of time doing this. And if you were with me for seven days, I'd probably spend the first one to two days really breaking out of who do I actually want to be? Do I really want to spend time with this stuff? Or would I rather spend time creating what I love? That's my invitation to you. The next session we have, in fact, I may even just do a training and put it up before the next session and make it maybe 30, 40 minutes and actually put up how to create a well-formed outcome. Because now that you know, it's about knowing your outcome, taking action, all the other steps, it's now time to create your outcome. I've talked about it. I've put the ideas inside your mind. So it's there, but who do I really wanna be? Define it well, and define it from the beginning. Define the money, define the aspects of success, define the parameters for you. Do you want to be the author with all the money, but is so sick they're about to die? Would you like to be the author that has all the health and wealth? Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's, it's about having it all. Do you see yourself as a healthy author? Takes walks through beautiful woods, gets inspired. Authors need time to get inspired. They need to look at the world around them, absorb it, feel it, get inspired guys, that is valuable time for you. The world is so inspirational. Focus your time and your efforts. Where do I get inspired? Where do I feel the best? All of this, get in there, right? So I may actually choose to do that. And if I let you guys know, I may have a whole video on creating your well-formed outcome. That way I don't have to spend another session by actually doing it. And then when we come back, and you've created a well-formed outcome, I'm then going to teach you how to put it into your future. So the next one is about how to put it in your future, how to set goals, put them in your future, and we're gonna do it together. And then we're going to start to evaluate based on what's working, what's not working. And I'm gonna teach you how to coach yourself. This is a massive group coaching where I'm gonna teach you how to coach yourself and have your, your own self have ownership of your goals and your outcomes. If you need more direct guidance and there's more direct, I'm available for purchase to, for coaching in the most positive way. 
you can hire me as my services, right? So that is an option if you need more intensive work. But if this is working for you, then fantastic. Let's keep going. And for a lot of people, it does. So I will let you guys know fairly soon. We'll wrap up this session. Um, I would like to just spend, if, if there's just, are there any questions from what we've talked about today? I've come at you with a lot of energy, a lot of passion, a lot about what we've talked about with learning, being unconscious. Are there any questions that you feel like you'd like to ask um, for the group that might be a benefit for you? Okay, question in the chat. Yes, I will be posting the script. Uh, yes, I will. I will be getting the uh, the following slides I put up today. Yep, I will be getting to everybody. Yes. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Cool. Cool. So if there's no more questions, um, you can always reach out to me. I'm available. My Facebook, my Facebook profile is always a great place to reach out. Um, some people have my number. If you want to reach out and you've got my number, feel free to text. Um, just recognize I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. This week's been a really, really busy week for coaching. I've gotten, I've been on almost calls, not 24 hours, but <clears throat> pretty close to it. So it's been a, it's been a, it's been an awesome one. So, but if you text me, I'll get back to you. If you message me, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I uh, hope you guys get a lot of value from this. Hope this is helping. And uh, yeah, we will do that. We'll talk soon. And uh, yeah, thanks guys. Appreciate your time. All right. We'll see you next time.